Oh, how is my time in leeway? Well, where is the Exuvia? What are you talking about? You are God. What are you talking? I'll show you God. <laughs> it was, it was pretty good. The journey to find my sister has taken me to Leeway, the land of contracts and home to the Geo Archon. Or if you want to get technical, China. That's fine too. Not only has our environment changed, but so has our goals. While it's true we're here to gather info on our sister, I personally am here on a quest of my own. That's right, I plan on building the ultimate team. A team of characters so strong, nobody in all of Tevat, 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 can stand in their way. A team I have named the God Squad. How do I plan on going about this? Simple. Pulling for every character that looks cool, watching every tips and trick video known to mankind, farming domains, farming weekly bosses doing the abyss doing events and some co-op if i'm feeling social i didn't waste any time after the last video and i managed to pull farzan razor and noel and i got myself a pretty decent looking team not the team i wanted but you know they'll they'll do we arrive in leeway at the best possible time considering it's the rite of dissension the rite of dissension is something that is held once a year when the geo archon rex lapis comes down and bestows his divine prediction to guide the people on how to run leeway we head to yujin terrace where we see ning wong the head of the leeway she sing she sing some of these words may get butchered please do not judge me it may sound like i know what i'm talking about but this lady told me everything i need to know she dis venti Attack her, not me. The rite of dissension begins with Ningguan taking center stage to summon Rex Lapis down from the sky and he's dead. But even more importantly, he's a dragon. The motherfucking Geo Archon has been killed. Ningguan calls for the exits to be sealed as the Millilith begin to arrest suspects. We try to sneak away but end up getting spotted and nearly caught until this guy named Child shows up and saves the day. After saving us, he reveals to us that he is a member of the Fatui but has no intention on harming us. See? This is why I like Child. We meet at Northland Bank and he tells us to head to Jeyun Cursed, the home of the Adeptus. He hands us these things called Sigils of Permissions. These are talismans that are supposed to like keep us safe from the Adeptus and let them know that we're good guys. Why do I have to do that? How did I get placed into a divine homicide investigation? I don't know. We get to the home of the Adepti and the first thing I notice is that they have floating rocks. Why are there floating rocks? rocks. That's when we meet our first Adeptus, Mooncarver. We show him our sigil of permission, but immediately after that we were confronted by the Millilist. I would use this opportunity to show more of the squad, but this was honestly just too easy. I mean, look at me. I did them so dirty, I might as well unlock my damn self up. After handling the Millilith, we tell Mooncarver about Rex Lapis and he was not too excited. Preposterous. Preposterous! He tells us to search for the three other Adepti. Mountain Shaper, Cloud Retainer, and a Guardian Yakshu. We went to Mountain Shaper, and as you can assume, he was pissed. We went to Cloud Retainer, and as you can assume, she was pissed. We told Xiao, and he was hard to read. After that, I headed back to Li Wei to talk to Child, and he told us that since the incident during the Rite of the Dissension, nobody can come near the Exuvia. And he also said that the Chi Sing have also hidden the vessel. Well, that's not good news, because that's the only reason I'm here. Luckily, Child says he has a person for us to meet. But I mean, I just got back from the home of the Adepti. I'm trying to live a little. I'm AR-25. I got events that need eventing. I got enemies that need enemying. I got characters that need charactering. I even got this one little ascension quest that needs uh, ascensioning. Where am I? I had to use my old squad for this since they were the only ones leveled up enough to do the job. The enemies weren't difficult or nothing. But then tragedy struck. Oh my gosh. They're kind of they're kind of everywhere. I'm I'm kind of panicking right now. My health is dropping and I'm panicking. No. 
No! Do I have to survive? Like, what do I have to? Oh, I gotta defeat all of them. Oh, that's not good. Ah. I know what needs to happen. I know they said y'all are weak. I know they said y'all not ready for this. But y'all have to show up and show out, okay? Especially you, Noel. I'ma need you to show up and show out. Sucrose, you already know what to do. Kaya, you already know what to do. Razor, bark, bark. Go crazy, my boy. It's go time. I think it's safe to say everyone on the new team went crazy. I cleared my way through the domain dungeon thingy and I was now ascended. Let's go. A hundred. And I'm about to spend those too. Oh, time for a celebration. I mean, surely we'll pull something. Great. Okay, we got nothing. After my failed attempt to pull for some characters, I decided that if I can't get them through the stars, then I'll get them in the abyss. This looks intimidating. Okay, so what is the abyss? It's basically a special type of domain where you challenge various enemies on different floors and chambers, and in turn, you get rewarded with different types of rewards. To my surprise, I was doing pretty well for myself. I cleared the first floor with ease. It wasn't until floor two that I saw the fault in my team building skills. For some reason, I decided it would be a good idea to put these four on a team that prioritizes cryo damage. And, uh, yeah. Which ended less than six abyssal stars earned this floor. Cannot un. Oh, Somehow, some way, we made it out of floor two alive. Then it was time to enter floor three. This floor prioritized animal damage more than anything, so I went in fully confident with my new team. As you can expect, I struggled. Bad. Like, real bad. Razor died. Sucrose died. I died. Even Kaya died. He didn't even fade away, bro just disappeared. But I'm not quitting. I will get Shangli. But I know in order for that to happen, things are gonna need to change and they're going to need to change now. That's when I made the executive decision to go and grab Lynette, Sucrose, and Farazan. And, and Barbara, Barbara came too. With all four of these ladies put together, I assembled my new team, the best girls. My all girl team meant to destroy any and everything they lay eyes on. I'll be the first to admit that although I sound excited now, at the moment, I was running on hope. But to my surprise, they actually did really good in the first two chambers, all of them. Faruzan, Lynette, and Sucrose went dumb and barbara she was she was there yeah she was there for moral support thanks to them we pretty much ran through floor three with ease and got shangling everyone say hi to shangling hi shangling i tried to get the other girl but she'll just have to wait because floor four was something else like i'm good <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going back there. I decided that I was gonna keep Zhang Ling and the best girls together and use them for a little while. I then went back to Liwei Harbor to participate in this year's Lantern Ride event. They have these quests and games that you can do to gain festive fever and at 800 points you get a free character. And you know Papa loves him some free stuff. They had these games that you could participate in with other players. It was so much fun that I kept crashing into people and blowing them up. Winning. Yeah, no, get away from me, <laughs> stupid child. <laughs> oh shit. After the super fun games, I did a less fun puzzle game with Goba and this rabbit thing. After a few hours of playing, I ended up getting Sincho, a new outfit. Listen, I had a really hard time deciding who I wanted, considering I knew nothing about any of these characters besides Beto. Beto looks cool. She, she chucks beer like this, but I don't really like Claymore characters, at least not right now. In the end, I did end up getting Sing Show and I leveled him up, read his talent info, gave him a weapon, and I leveled up those artifacts. Oh, and I pulled Charlotte too. I don't know if I'm ever gonna use her, I just thought y'all should know. Like, somebody needs to know. Somebody should know about what this girl's doing with this camera, and somebody needs to know about this girl's safety. This camera's not gonna do too much. With my new squad, we're finally back in action at the Northland Bank where Child had promised us to introduce us to a guy he knows. That guy he knows, his name is Zongli. He claims he can show us to Rex Lapis's vessel, but in order to help us, we must first help him in setting up the rite of pardon. He says he's not too happy with how the Chi-Sing are handling the whole situation of the prime Adepti passing. I say sure, why not? 
this the only way I see the vessel after all. He also did this weird thing where he kind of like shaded my boy Venti. The task at hand was now set and that was to help Zongli set up the rite of parting. I'm going to be completely honest here when I say this. This was the most longest boring act of this entire chapter. A lot of stuff happened, but it felt like it was padded in so much unnecessary dialogue and walking around. Not to mention, this man is broke. As I thought, I didn't bring any. Any what? Mora. Yeah, he's that type of guy. Why are you offering to buy all of this if you don't have the money? Anyways, after a bunch of running around, we got the first item we needed. The Nata Lucas Jade. We ended up learning that the Exuvia, aka the Geo Archon's vessel, is in the Golden House where all the mint is stored in Leeway. I wonder how he knows that. After getting a jade, the next step was to make the perfumes, and of course, nothing's ever easy. We get some silk flowers, get our water, make some oils, and bada bing, bada boom, we got our perfume. We talked to a lady named Madame Ping, who was so clearly an adeptus, and entered her teapot to get the cleansing bill. After that, we went and got some kites. Child stopped by and helped us pay for the kites although he was acting a little weird and aggressive pushing us for information for whatever reason after we get the kites we go to the pharmacy for some everlasting incense and we meet this girl called Chi Chi who is a zombie and she sent us up to Mount Tianhong to find a cocoa goat whatever it is doesn't exist where she sent us so we end up going back to the pharmacy where she tells us she meant coconut milk shortly after that Aruchimaru shows up and says that every last instance is going to be 3 million moro. What? Then Child appears and does some negotiating, managing to land us not even a 10% discount. It went from 3 million moro to 2,990,000 moro. What? is even going on. Turns out he had one of his agents listening to us and our plans, which sucked. I mean, he saved my life. Now nah, I gotta kill him. Finally, we get done setting up for the day and Zhang Li decides to treat us to a meal. It's here where we not only learn about the Jade Chamber and Ning Wan's role inside of it, but we were also invited to the Jade Chamber by Ganyu. Act two finally came to a close and it was time to relax. I did some more exploring and I just let my curiosity lead the way. I ended up going back to Mondstadt to run it back with that animal hypostasis. I tried going back to the abyss to get the girl, but that didn't go well. After that, I spoke to Amber and Razor about his wolf problem in Mondstadt. Really, really struggled with these ruin hunters. Somebody help me, somebody help me, somebody help me, somebody help me. Then I fought the Oceana, you know, light work, light work. And then I did the trial runs for this version. Two words, Yaimiko, another word. Chow. One sentence. I need Yaimiko and Chow. We made our way to the Jade Chamber where the first thing Ningguan does is admit to stalking us, but I guess that's like common practice since, you know, China. She tells us a bit about the Archon War and the stories of the Seven and why she hit the Exuvia. And without saying much, we both knew who was really responsible for the killing of Rex Lapis. When we get inside the Jade Chamber, we see the wall mentioned in the story we were told at the dinner. Apparently, it records all of Li Wei's secrets. Turns out some of those secrets was actually Fatui research on the sigil of permission. We take the paper and head out to see what exactly they plan on doing with the sigils. Apparently, they were trying to learn how to make their own sigils to channel divine powers. That's weird. There's only two people we've met this far who would know anything about the divine, and only one of them gave us a sigil of permission. We meet up with Zhang Li to finish our rite of parting tour. We tell him about our meeting with Ningguang, about the Fatui and their plans, and then we set out to get some wild glazed lilies. Now, I can finally say the rite of parting is officially set up. We get back to Leeway Harbor and see that the Fatui and the Millilith are all outside. They tell us that the Adepti are on the move but have been put to a stall thanks to the Chi Sing. Part ways with Zhang Li and head to the Golden House to look for the fuse. The only person who could be behind all of this. Once we make our way into the Golden House, we see the Millilith laid the fuck out and nobody guarding the Exuvia. Of course, right after Child appears. Apparently while we were setting up the rite of parting, he used that opportunity to gather info on us so he could steal the gnosis from inside the exuvia which we both know that's not gonna happen oh child i don't want to do this to you oh, I'm, oh my god child this is just completely unfair this is just completely unfair child oh my god i'm sorry i'm sorry oh no oh no we get his first bar down and it turns out he has another life bar ah uh, child this is this is just unfair <laughs> You better not let you better not let Barbara take you out. If I get you with Barbara, you suck. Don't let Barbara do it. Uh oh, oh, you let Barbara do you bad. 
Oh, that's tough. Eventually, we managed to overwhelm him. After seeing his vulnerable child takes a strike to which we counter with some newfound geo power. And next thing we know, Charles was arm's length away from the Exuvia. He reaches inside only to find that there is no Gnosis. Clouded with anger, he turns to us and assumes that we must have had the Exuvia. So he just powers up on me like that? Okay. I'm not gonna lie. This second or third round, it gave me a bit of trouble. Yo, is that a fucking... Did he just casually pull out a whale? After coming down from his power trip, he realizes that we never had the Gnosis, and considering that there is no Gnosis, he realizes Rex Lapis was never really dead. So he brings out his backup plan, which is awakening the overlord of the Vortex, Osile, on Leeway Harbor using his sigils of permission to lure out Rex Lapis so he can fight Child one-on-one. -on -one. We get to the Jade Chamber and we are met by not only the Chi Sing, but the Adepti as well. And that's when Cloud Retainer suggests that if we're gonna win, then we gotta use these ballistas. It was time for the literal god squad to come out. The coolest part about this was that the other Adepti all chimed in to help. Madam Ping with her chalk waves, Ganyu with whatever her boosts were, Chao with his movement speed. Barbara on crack. Barbara is on crack right now. We were officially the god squad. But then Osao charges up, unleashing a barrage attack. We ended up falling, but thanks to Xiao, we were saved. With no other options left, Ning Wong desperately but heroically sacrifices the Jade Chamber. And with everyone's strength, we charge up a final blow to take down Osao and save Li Wei Harbor. After the greatest fight I've ever had in my little blonde life, we stand with the Adepti and Chi Sing as they come to an agreement on how they'll decide to govern Li Wei in the future. The time of contracts between gods and Li Wei is over, opening the door between Li Wei and its people. Oddly enough, this whole thing happened because Child wanted to lure out Rex Lapis, but since he never came out, we were left wondering. So of course, with no other options to turn to, we set out to look for Zongli. We meet him at the Northland Bank speaking to Senora. Yes. That Senora. And Child. Apparently, Zongli is Rex Lapis, which, I mean, duh. Because just like Venti, He's broke. We then find out that Senora and Zongli had made a deal, so he willingly hands over his gnosis with the only clue being as it's his duty to the Saritsa. Apparently he faked his own death to see if Liwei could operate without him, which if you ask me was pretty extreme, but do you? The rite of pardon ceremony is finally being held as we watch Ning Wong and the Chi Sing give their speech. They reach out to us to thank us and ask us what it is that we want. And of course, we only want one thing if they can help put up some missing posters for our sister. After the incident in Leeway, we met a man named Dainsliff in Mondstadt who was in search of the Abyss Order. Instead of traveling with him, we head to the Adventurer's Guild in Leeway where Ganyu explains to us that the Treasure Hoarders are planning to attempt a heist on the Abyss Order. We make our way into some dark ruins to see an upside down statue of Barbados and a dead treasure hunter. Immediately after that, the area begins to shake and on an attempt to escape the ruins, we were stopped by an Abyss Herald. After we defeat the Abyss Herald, we escape the ruins to see Dainsliff waiting outside. We tell him about about the statue and the dead thief we saw and he suggests that the abyss order is behind all of this. Together we go through a Mondstadt and leeway in search of traces of the abyss order. We learn about the land called Conria, a land that causes distant memories from the back of my mind to come to the forefront of my mind as if it's a place that I'm familiar with. Conria is or was a nation with no gods, not because they had left or they had been killed but because they had never had any to begin with. And for a long time, the nation flourished with humanity inside of it until it was destroyed by gods unknown to the land. That's where these field tillers, also known as ruin guards, come from. After defeating several abyss mages, we learned that the abyss order is planted to summon Osayo and attach his limbs to the statue in the ruins, along with the eye of the first field tiller to make a mechanized god of their own. We go back to Mondstadt to get some more information from the cathedral and pretty much learn that the missing statue is the one that we saw in the ruins. Immediately after, Rosaria shows up informing us that Woven Dome has been under attack by the Abyss Order. We go there and defeat the Abyss Herald once again and ask Boreas what does he know about the first field tiller and unknowing of the name, he only tells us that a machine similar to the one that we're describing had in fact entered his territory not too long ago. With all the dots finally connected, we head back to the ruins where we saw the upside down statue. While we were in there, we were attacked again by the Abyss Herald and his mages. We fight for a while and then the Abyss Herald tries to retreat 
street, but is luckily stopped by Dainsliff who had put him in a chokehold. Suddenly, he was stopped by a shockwave made by someone else's sword. The smoke settles and in shock, I see a familiar face. She asks us why we're with Dainsliff. According to her, Dainsliff is one of the royal guards of the Conria, the Twilight Sword, and he failed to protect Conria when they needed him most, which led to a curse of immortality being placed upon him while forced to watch those he was sworn to protect being turned into monsters. Which brings up the question, are these Abyss Mages citizens of Conria? Despite all of that, we try to convince her to join us anyway so we can just go home, but she refuses, stating that she has to see her go through with the Abyss Order. They open up a portal once again and take our sister along with them. We try to follow in behind desperately, but it closes before we could even enter. Saddened by what just happened, we leave the ruins and head back to Leeway. Paimon tries to cheer us up by reminding us that at least we gained some useful information out of all of this. With our eyes set on the sea, we prepare for Inazuma.